you know, I'm going to do another video where I'm holding the camera. <laughs> Lucky you. Uh, I have the uh, propeller blades pretty well done. Pretty much finished. Still a little bit of sanding yet to do on those. Uh, you can see the wing root fillets are going in. Um, this is the first, well, literally the second application. If you recall, I had put just a a, a uh, shallow bead along the wing root seam uh, just to seal it. And now this one, this is the first um, of probably two, three, maybe even four applications of filler. Got it done on both sides. Maybe a little better light there. So you see how the fillets uh, are necessary in order to complete the shape and get that uh, get get to the proper profile of our uh, wing root fairing. Right. There's another look at the prop hub, and then the uh, blades themselves will just kind of click into these openings. Got a little bit of a noise in here today. Got quite a quite a downpour. A little bit of a rainstorm today. I don't know if you can hear that. You know, a little bit of rain. Uh, you know, we, we'll take it. And uh, anyway, so you see how the the uh, the line has been taped off for both the fuselage and the wing. And you do that just by using the template they provide. Just lay this on top of a tape that I've put down on glass. So you lay your, sh your strip of tape on the glass, drop the template on top of it about halfway, uh, you know, right kind of like down the middle of the tape is what you want to make your line. And then so you slice it off along the line and then bring your tape up and figure the best uh, location given your reference materials any reference material you have whether it's another model of the same plane doesn't matter what scale it is you're just looking for a representation of where that line is and then you lay the tape on there accordingly and so that masks off the uh, it's like just like uh, masking for paint you're masking for filler and when the time comes to uh, pull the tape away uh, if you lift it and then pull it at right angle, it will slide out from under. For the most part, it might leave a chippy edge, but then that's what your filler does. You come back with the wet filler, lay that along that chipped edge, and it'll reestablish the line that you want. And then using sandpaper on a block, uh, not a big block, but a, but a small block, jebby, a small block, then you can uh, shape those lines exactly how you want them and then you get in there with the uh, cylindrical tape something that's rolled up you know like a like a homemade cigarette something rolled up a little tighter than this you know pretty much like it like a homemade cigarette you know what I mean and then you just uh, sand away like back in the day all right, so anywho's, that's uh, that's where we're at here now. We got the uh, got the uh, wing root fairings going in, and uh, this is how I've got the bombs done up onto the uh, pylons. Now these are removable; they're just friction fit up on there. And uh, going to be doing a little bit more slight modification. I want the bombs to sit a little bit closer to the pylon, so I'm going to have to uh, cut the uh, the bomb brackets a little shorter I made them a little too long so they're holding the bombs off a little bit too far from the from the pylon so we're gonna have to fix that and cure it and that'll be that'll be good so when these uh, blades go on to the hub I'm gonna put uh, wraps of uh, uh, rings of um, solder at the base to replicate the uh, propeller blade uh, uh, flanges that secure to the hub so there'll probably be two wraps along the bottom edge or one thick one I haven't decided yet um, you know heavier solder rather than light solder um, 
Now the diameters I'm working with, uh, I don't have an example out for you. Probably, probably do a single wrap of this uh, size, but I'm still debating that. I want to look at some more photographs and see what looks right. Um, so they'll have that. So when this, and this will be sanded quite a bit more. And then with the with the um, solder uh, rings on the bases of those blades, the blades will be secured better uh, to the wood block. I might also drill and insert a short length of a straight pin into each of these and then drill holes in the hubs so that they actually have a much better contact. Uh, remember, I, I try to do this uh, these builds for a little bit of durability so that if the blades, the prop gets knocked or something, the blade won't just snap off. I want to secure it in there a little bit better. Um, all right, so we still have to uh, mask and uh, develop the uh, rest of these fairings around the tail section, both sides, top and bottom, left and right, up and down. And then the underside of the wing, I still have to, uh, we got to get in there and I've started just at, oops, there go the blades. I started just at the, the wing heel right there at the bottom back of the wing and filled in underneath those fillets. But uh, that needs a full length um, fairing. And that's going to be tricky around the landing gear doors. I think I talked about that earlier, how that was going to be tricky around those doors. But I've got a plan or an idea. or I have a, a hope that might work. <laughs> anyway, uh, the build's coming along. Lots of stuff has gotten done that I... I didn't know how much of this stuff things that I thought might be a bigger problem than they were you know and all that so um, after the P47 it's not is it too soon to talk about after the P47 the P47 yeah, still got a long way to go let's not talk about after yet okay so the wing root fairings when that when that's all done and the tail fairings are all done uh, it'll be time for paint we'll get the primer going and I really am struggling to figure out what the what livery I'm gonna what squadron this guy belongs to. You know, it looks like a late mid to late 44s, 1944. Um, you know, I, I want the underwing only invasion stripes, so that would put it, you know, late June at the earliest, and definitely not. Pr uh, before D-Day. D-Day, would it would have had stripes on top and bottom. Uh, but once we realized, the U.S. realized they had air superiority and didn't need to worry about death from above, they took the top stripes off for the most part. Or just didn't bother for the new in aircraft that were coming into the country. They only, they only painted the underside so that they wouldn't get friendly fire from the ground. But uh, when you have total air superiority and you see another plane in the sky, there's not much chance you're going to go zipping after it, you know, if it's is it because it's, I mean, there just it wasn't going to be an enemy aircraft. So there was no need to put the uh, the striping on the top sides of the aircraft after, uh, after you know, late mid to late June. So I want it to pr probably bare metal, even though I don't know how that's going to go down on this uh, pulse. I have never done a bare metal on an infill job, at least not yet. Uh, I got pretty smooth finishes on the last two projects using, you know, colored paints, using whites and and off-whites and <clears throat> different colors. Uh, but I, I, you know, the metal really, I mean, a, 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 a natural aluminum finish would, would really, it would show all the warts and blemishes if they're, you know, if they're there, you'll, you'd see them. And, and I don't want that. So I'm going to probably try the metal and see what it looks like, see what a, an aluminum finish looks like on it. And if it's not good, then I'll switch back over to the camouflage deal and probably just do Gabreski. Even though I don't think his airplane had the strake on it. Um, I don't think he had the deeper belly pan that this one has, the later, the later war P-47. I mean, I, I did it just about everything to this, but clip the wings. I don't like the look of a clipped wing. So I wanted the full elliptical wing, but I wanted I wanted the later strake, not the one that, that goes straight into the fuselage, but the one that's got this rounded end on it. 
that's from the P47N. My understanding is that when these uh, upgrades became available at the factories in the U.S., they started shipping some of these parts that could be installed in the field, and they would have shipped the earlier strake, uh, dorsal fin strakes, and then started shipping the later ones. So a pilot of an earlier P-47D uh, could have ended up with a, a later strake on his airplane um, simply because they were just shipping them as they were coming off the line and spare parts and for field modification and so forth. The airplane had an adverse yaw uh, situation without it, especially at higher speed. So the strake is, was developed to counter and what that means is you, you flip the rudder one way and the airplane wants to swing the other way rather than just follow that rudder guidance. It, it creates an adverse yaw. So <clears throat> the strakes um, limited th the amount of that adverse yaw. Yeah, so it was a necessary field modification for the jug. Uh, what else can I tell you uh, that I know or that I think I know? I could be wrong, you know, look it up. I could be wrong. Anyway, there's, um, I did add the, I don't know if I talked about this, um, the, the chin scoop has, um, basically, there are scoops at the uh, inside at the firewall. Uh, the center one carries the ducted air back uh, through the supercharger, and I believe the left and right, which are round uh, intakes, uh, suck up cold air for the, um, for the oil cooler, for the, for the engine. I believe that's how it how it works, um, but don't quote me on that. It could also be a bypass and have something else to do with the uh, supercharger intercoolers or something like that. Okay, but I I went ahead and just put, um, you know, tried to finish them up a little bit, put a, put faces on them, if you will, for those scoops, those uh, filter uh, openings, uh, and, uh, and there's a look inside the cockpit such as it is and I still have to add the headrest and the straps and a couple other little detail parts do dabs whatnots and so forth and to get them in there so there'll be two or three more applications of the um, filler here before I take the tape off and then we'll get into sanding it and shaping it and making it look like uh, proper uh, wing root fairing once that's uh, pretty well on the way We'll come back and do the tail end as a separate um, step. So first these will be finalized, perfected, and then then I'll get to work on those. And then, you know, there might be a few overall coats of uh, sealer or even possibly one, one more last um, application of filler and then sealer before I finish the airplane uh, and prep it for paint. All right, thanks for watching. Everybody have a... Have a good day out there. Be safe. Happy, happy Easter, I guess it is. Um, so enjoy your families. See you soon.